Yeah, I think a lot more of the same here. And uh, happy new year to you too, Zach. Um, you know, I think the beginning of the year, we're already seeing the cyclical trade outperform, but again, we're only you know, three trading days into the year. I don't think you can read into that too much. But I think what actually is significant is the way the bond market's moving. I mean, look at the 10-year treasury. Uh, we just touched 1.7% yesterday. We know the Fed is going to phase out their bond buying. And in addition to that, we know that we could see like probably three rate hikes this year. So you know, I think the longer term trend in the big picture is interest rates are going higher. They've been going higher. It's been a volatile ride. And of course, that's not good for the bond market. So yeah, I think things you have to be cautious about this year is how you own your bonds. Like for my clients, we own our bonds outright, they come due because if rates go up, bond prices go down. And if you look at like high yield bonds or aka junk bonds, you really haven't gotten rewarded for the kind of yields that you're receiving. They're very low for the risk that you're taking. So, you know, I do think that inflation is going to continue. Uh, I don't think that's like a shocking revelation. Uh, it's going to come down a little bit, right? The supply chain issues that we have at some point are going to start to ease. But I think overall, inflation is still here. Um, I'd be more cautious of those long duration assets. Bitcoin, excuse me, I had a cough there. Uh, some of these <laughs> more speculative assets, uh, which could still do well in the short term. But again, I think, you know, there's a lot of risk ahead, especially if interest rates continue to go higher and inflation continues to kick in. Ryan, we did have that conversation this morning in our meeting about the transition going from a Bitcoin conversation to you, because I know you have uh, <laughs> been skeptical on that front. Let's talk about your stock picks, though. You said it is still about the cyclicals, the value plays. I know you've been bullish on that. What's a name that you're really watching closely? Well, I think energy, which I was a big bull last year, um, one of the best performing asset classes, uh, still looks good this year. I mean, it still trades relatively cheap. Yeah, I mentioned Exxon last year. Uh, that's probably your most your pure play, let's call it, on the production side. So if prices go higher, Exxon's going to be the most sensitive to that. Still trades at like 16 times forward earnings, which is dirt cheap versus the S&P 500. And of course, you're getting like a 5 6% dividend. So the energy sector still has a long way to go, a lot of runway there. Uh, demand's going to continue to go up as the economy continues to you know, pick up. Uh, we're still at like 40% of offices are uh, 40% capacity, and oil's already close to $80 a barrel again. So imagine when we get fully open, uh, what that's going to look like. So I think yeah, energy is still a great place to be. I just mentioned interest rates are rising. Financials, again, I think they look very good this year. And the one play here that I think no one loves, but I love more than anybody, is the international markets. Um, the dollar was strong last year. You know, Growth rates there have been slower. But at the end of the day, if you start looking at international emerging markets, they trade so much cheaper. A lot of the markets there are more cyclical, less you know, dependent on technology. Um, and you know, look, I mean, 80% of the world's population is outside the US. So you've got to mm -hmm. have a healthy international position in your portfolio. I wonder if some of the risk there too, maybe why it is cheap is, is kind of reflective of maybe some of the fears that another variant popping up could derail some of the growth or recovery there. But, um, you know, that's also not to say that the same risks don't exist here, right? And we, we were talking with your old sparring buddy, Ross Gerber, uh, earlier, kind of about <laughs> the risks to actually seeing the Fed follow through on three rate hikes in 2022. I mean, how realistic is it, do you think, that we get those in the way that there are so much, uh, so much uncertainty ahead? Oh, I think it's very certain. I mean, at the end of the day, that the Fed's always behind, not ahead of the curve. Remember, the Fed was still telling you that inflation was transitory up until like two months ago. So if anything, the Fed's probably going to have to play catch up. So for my man, Ross, who has all those long duration assets, he's like the Kathy Woods of Santa Monica, <laughs> uh, you know, his plays are at risk here in a big, big way. So again, what I'm seeing with a lot of portfolios right now, a lot of these millennial clients that are starting to come to the door of my firm is a heavy weighting to long duration assets, whether it's technology, disruptive technologies, Bitcoin, you know, all that is the same trade. And really what's going to put the fire out there is going to be those higher interest rates and living in a world where inflation is, is much higher than it's been for the last decade. The Kathy Woods of Santa Monica. I think that's a new one for me, but Ryan, uh, that's a cue for us to, to do. We've got to plan another segment between you and Ross and, and see you debate it out here because it's always been about value versus growth. Ryan, always good to get your insight. Ryan Payne, Capital, uh, Payne Capital Management President and the host of Payne Points of Wealth podcast.